Oh hi, I'm the heretic, and I have a bone to pick with you, Daps. You asked us to respond to your starting voluntary capitalism, or vocap, and then you delete the video as I already scripted and recorded my reply before I can download your video, and you forced me to completely rewrite my script from scratch. You probably didn't do it intentionally, but I'm still pretty upset about it, so forgive me when I say, dick move, man. Dick move. Ugh. Fine. I'm not letting YouTube's inability to include a frickin' replace footage button beat me. Let's just get this over with. So Mr. Dapperton wants to abandon the term anarcho-capitalist in favor of the term voluntary capitalist. I'm sure his reasons are well thought out and reasonable. Just hit it already. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Dapperton, and as you probably know, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. But from here on out, I'm no longer gonna call myself that. Yes, I'm creating my own capitalist ideology. Okay, but why though? It's because anarcho-capitalists are split up into two groups. There are anarcho-capitalists that hate, hate the state so much that they would never use the state to eliminate the state. That means they don't vote. They don't want to whittle down the government and make it smaller and smaller and smaller until there's nothing left. Because that would never work for reasons I'll explain shortly. No, no. They want to throw it out all in one day. This is a false dichotomy. Come on, Daps. You're smarter than this. Look, think of it as a board game, okay? We're playing a game, and the game's already set, and it's ruled by status. Now, what most anarcho-capitalists want to do is just grab the board and flip it over, flip that game over. But what that's going to do is start a war. And I'm sorry, but anarcho-capitalists are not the majority. They're going to lose that war. Which is also why the revolution isn't a viable strategy to achieve a voluntary society. Well, one reason among many. So the best thing to do is play by the status rules and beat them at their own goddamn game. It would be hilarious to beat them at their own game, but to compare it to chess is, well, wrong. Chess has a well-established and concrete set of rules all players voluntarily agree to as a condition of playing the game. The analogy you're drawing from would only be accurate if the other player gets to change the rules of chess as you are playing and you must abide by them. In this case, the state will decide all his pieces are queens and he gets two turns in a row. You see, the difference is that chess is actually a fair game. You do that and you avoid the war altogether. And suddenly, you actually have a chance to do some damage and possibly maybe win. And that's where vocaps come in. Anarcho-capitalists who believe in using the state to eliminate the state. That's not going to happen, Daps. They decide the rules, and they aren't going to allow themselves to be voted out of existence. And that's even assuming you're able to overcome things like welfare dependents voting for just whoever promises to give them the most free stuff. How do you guys expect to eliminate the government when everybody that hates the government like us is encouraged not to freaking vote? Well, according to you, there are only two ways to eliminate the state, which, as you'll admit shortly, isn't the case. And if you think agorism is the solution, that, that the counter-economy is going to fix it, uh, it's not. The currency cap for the counter economy is 1 trillion. The cap on the fiat currency is 17 trillion. It's not even close. Oh, so there are other strategies to dismantling the state? Interesting. To address your point, currency caps are not static. Just two years ago, January 2016, Bitcoin had a currency cap of about 6 billion. Now, at the time of this recording, it's 156 billion. That's some impressive growth if I do say so myself. Now, does this guarantee that the counter-economy will eventually and inevitably overtake the fiat economy? No, but to say that it definitely won't is either foolishness or arrogance. Not only does the cap on the counter-economy have to catch up to the fiat currency, it has to completely get rid of the fiat currency cap and get rid of the fiat currency in general. To say that agorism and the counter-economy is enough to work on its own is a lie. You need to eliminate the government using the government too. Why not? You're working off the premise that the counter-economy must eliminate the fiat economy completely, but that doesn't need to happen. All that needs to happen is that people exchanging cryptocurrency and receive goods and services that they would ordinarily get from the state. People exchanging in cryptocurrency mean the government can't track or collect information or collect sales tax. People collecting salaries in crypto means they aren't paying income taxes, nor can the IRS possibly know how much people are earning. Put simply, you compete with the government. Competition will crush the state, as it's very quickly innovated out of existence. 
It may linger in some vestigial form, but nobody will have any idea who the President of the United States is because they'll be completely irrelevant, as it should be. The name anarchist have been hijacked by the left. When people now think of anarchism, they don't think capitalism. They don't think voluntary transactions. What they instead think is the opposite. They think of communism. They think of an edgy teenager with a leather jacket and a green mohawk. Somebody that embraces chaos. They did. Language is important, as I'm sure you're aware. In 1984, the English socialists developed Newspeak, a brand new language in which being critical or questioning of Ingsoc was impossible. We see collectivists hijacking words all the time. Liberal used to refer to the intellectual tradition of limited, federalized government popularized by John Locke. Justice used to mean, well, justice, and don't even get the liberalists started on equality and egalitarianism. My point is, it's time we take some words back. After all, how can we create a voluntary society if we can't even convince people that anarchism is not a scary word? Come on, what you're advocating for is called retreat. You're allowing the edgy teenager to win. None of these ideas represent me, but they represent the name anarchism. So, I want to detach myself from the name anarchism. Daps, your argument is self-defeating. How can you expect to win at the ballot box when you've already surrendered the language? This is just needlessly confusing and polluting the political landscape with yet more adjectives that people need to know. Mr. Dapperton, you're smarter than this. Come on.